Good evening from Xfinity Center, Maryland over Bucknell, 80-78, a bit tighter than we had hoped. I'm Wayne Viner, that's Bruce Bosler. Stepping in today is A.J. Francis. Bruce, what did you see tonight? I saw a team that got a wake-up call. They thought it was sitting on top of the world after Wednesday night. They came out, they were not intense, but what I saw was the Baltimore kid, Daryl Morsel, yep. inject real life into this team. AJ, what'd you see? Um, I saw a team that fought. You know, they understood they were down 15, I think, or maybe 16 at one point, and they had to, they had a gut check. You, those are the type, kind of games early on in November. You get down to a team that you may have taken lightly coming in because they were 0-3 even though they lost to good teams. You know, you may have taken them lightly from the beginning, and you came out flat, and guess what? You had to wake up. You responded. You ended up coming out with a W, a big W that's going to look fantastic come March. Yeah, this is a darn good Bucknell team, but they're 0-4. But they came out with a mission tonight. Mm -hmm. And and they how can they still win the Patriot League? Yeah, but how can they be 0-4? I mean, they, they look like a real team there. They played some good teams. They're, they're, uh, they are going to be good. They're going to end up being, if not the winners of, probably the, definitely at the top of the Patriot League and more than likely end up going to the tournament. So this was a big win. That's what I'm saying. This this is going to be a win that's going to look really – it look, doesn't look – it looks good now, but Bucknell's 0-4. When they end up at the end of the season being 21-6, and you know, <laughs> it's going to look a lot better. Right. Daryl Morsell, a game changer. It looked like his team down the stretch. He didn't have the greatest stat line, and we'll get to the stats in a little bit, but between Fernando and Morsell, these freshmen really can play. Bruce, surprised? No. What have I been saying? I mean, I said it today on the show that Morsell has been, he's tough, he's rough, he's got it all. Coward had a good game. Yep. Herter, okay. Yep. Nickens, Wiley, and uh, even Bender, not there tonight. Right. Do we see more so in the starting lineup, AJ, or you think it's still a process? I think I think that he he probably ends the season with a more key part of the rotation. But I think I think he, what he's doing right now, you need somebody that can come off the bench and give you 10 to 15 a night off the bench because when you rest your starters and they can't come on and they're not the ones coming out maybe they have a bad game your bench carries you over the finish line aj tell us about the food drive and how it went uh it was great man um we had a lot of people come out um and bring canned goods um and non-perishables to all the uh to all the gates around the arena um before the game um we had a full truckload that we sent back to sarah's house which is um an emergency shelter in, uh, right off fort meade army base um we're doing it again this tuesday at the women's basketball game versus howard we're doing it um next friday at the women at the volleyball game versus northwestern and we're doing it next saturday at the penn state football game oh, that so penn state game. yeah it's gonna be Woo. it's we're, we're gonna raise a lot of cans yeah for that i'm expecting i'm expecting to not have a truck big enough for that penn state well, game we hope so so you were with the Redskins most recently. You, you still attached there in any way? I mean, I'm from here, but at, I mean, at the same time, like it's a business. That's the way the league works. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, I am. I have been blessed with the opportunity to play five years in the NFL. If I never play again, I, a, I mean, it's been a great ride. I mean, I played, started playing football when I was 12 years old, and um, you know, I could have never have afforded in a million years to come to University of Maryland. Um, I could have never imagined myself having the career and the life that I have now if it wasn't for football. So um, I've been blessed, and this whole. If it wasn't for football, this whole conversation would have never happened. So it's 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 been a blessing, and if it's the end of the road, it's the end of the road. I mean, that was a really good boys to men song, and I think that I think that it was one of their better ones. So it's not too bad. Well, well maybe on Monday you come out and sing, or next Saturday we yeah, do a little boys. Hey, AJ, my memory serves, but you you did play for uh, New England for a bit. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Belichick. Uh, he's he's great, man. I mean, Belichick breaks down the entire you know game plan. The for the offense and the defense on Wednesday when we come into the meeting. Like everybody understands the game plan on Wednesday because all he's going to do is exploit the weaknesses of the other team and enhance uh, what uh, um, the team's strengths are. So every Wednesday you come in, you got the game plan already by 8 a.m. and mm -hmm. then you just perfect it all the way through after that. Wow. And uh, you play for other coaches. Does yeah. Belichick stand above? 
Um, yeah, Belichick's, I mean, as far as head coaches, yeah, he's definitely the best head coach I've ever had. Um, like, X and the X's and O's wise. The coolest and like the head coach that I would like to play for the most was, was Coach Gruden yeah. uh, for the Redskins. So yeah. I absolutely love playing there for him. Um, but like head coach, yeah, for sure, Belichick. Okay, well, we're going to be back with uh, intern Mason going over the scoreboard. This is the Turp AJ, Talk Post Game Show Thank presented you. by Viner Four Gates. We'll be back at Xfinity Center in a moment. Maryland 80, <laughs> Bucknell's Bison 78. And as we all know, time is money. That's where our fully managed approach to IT can help. With proactive remote monitoring and management, we're able to keep tabs on your IT infrastructure 24-7, 365 days a year. And when a problem does arise, our technical experts can quickly resolve it, in many cases before you're even aware that there was a problem at all. For an affordable fee, we'll provide the monitoring, technical support, and full problem resolution you need to stay productive. Want to learn more? Drop us a line today to see exactly how we can help keep your systems running smoothly and keep you focused on what matters most, growing your business. Special guest here tonight from Glenn Clark Radio on Press Box. And uh, I get info from him all the time, but he goes back a long way. I had to school him. First game he ever was in the press box at Maryland in the football game. Yeah. He stood up and cheered. Well, I, Wayne, did you like that? I've, Just like you. Yeah. He stood up and I've cheered. Heard, I've heard you tell that story. That wasn't my first game. All right. And I don't remember what the circumstances you were. You cheered. I might have been drunk. All it's right. possible that yeah. I was drunk. Back right then, now. it probably yeah, was. Right. Glenn, your take on the game today. Uh, I heard you guys talking with AJ about it, and I, I would tend to agree with a lot of the things that you said. I don't think people realize how good Bucknell is. I call a lot of Patriot League games for XM, and it's a really good team, and it's loaded veterans. It's tough to beat a veteran team um, in the beginning of the year when they're playing every game like it matters. So I think that Maryland got a good test tonight. I think that's good for them. I think that what you said about Daryl Morcell is, is really right on. Uh, a guy that I think is going to continue to be a bigger and bigger factor. What's not to like about Bruno Fernando? Oh, oh my gosh. There is so much He's to really like good from two feet shooting down. Well, it's, huh? it's the baby hook. If you have a baby hook as a really legit big man, I, I don't know what else you can ask for. Uh, I, we were talking, I was talking to Steve Lavin the other day, and Steve said, if this nucleus stays together, it will be Maryland's first deep tournament run under Mark Turgeon. Yeah. And you can see that. You can buy into that. There's a lot of ifs, right? Does Justin Jackson just get the itch at some point because he projects so well? But the, the three from last year, these two this year, and then Jalen Smith, Aaron Wiggins, Eric Ayala, this is the makings of a very special nucleus for maybe not this March, but perhaps the following March. You know what? Maybe this March by the maybe, end of the Maybe, I mean, maybe. More so is right. exceeded expectations. Right. My nickname for him, you ready? The Baltimore Kid. Yeah, I mean, he There's plays. No doubt about it. Bruce, he plays like kid. every Baltimore kid. He is so tough. He does all of the dirty things that you want to play. He's Malcolm Delaney. He's, you know, insert name here of Baltimore kids that do those things. That's uh, exactly how Darren Morsell plays. He's, I mean, he's really fun to watch. All right, my man. Thanks Good for coming along. Oh, wait Thank a minute. You. Hey, well, How are we doing this? this is every awkward. day, every day. Oh, yeah, 10, 10 to noon. 10 to noon, glennclarkradio.com or pressboxonline.com slash radio. And you can read me. Pick up uh, Pressbox this month. It's got uh, Joe Flacco and John Harbaugh on the cover. I uh, got a story in there about Lenny Moore. That That's I want a you to whole other story for another day. Yeah, it is. Flacco. It is. Good to We're, see you, bud. All right, babe. Thank always you, a pleasure. It, pal. All right. All right. Go ahead. We're back here with Mason. Go ahead, Mason. What, give me the stats for tonight. Callen leads Terps in scoring with 17, followed by Herter with 16, Fernando with 14, and Daryl Morsell, a meaningful 15. Yeah, I, you, you look at the stat line, and it doesn't look stupendous. For Morsell. For Morsell. Yeah. But, it, well, I mean, he turned the game around in the first two minutes of the second half. He brought it when they needed it most. He might have not finished it off, but when they were down, he brought him back. That's important. You need a guy that can do that. Look, for Bucknell, Brown all over the place, 23 points on a 19. Thomas, uh, 17. The kid in the middle, uh, Fulan, get, had a pretty good game playing center against Fernando for a bit. And then Fernando, they started feeding him in the post. It started to work. What do you guys think was the deal with Chaco? Oh, something's maybe, wrong. And maybe maybe rested still him. a little bit of that injury. You know, the way that they're playing the schedule right now, it's game after game, and you got to practice in between. Maybe they just rest him tonight, but they looked pretty smooth without him. Yeah, they did, but look. Fernando, I've said it, I've talked about it with Wayne. Fernando and Justin Jackson, Morsel, and uh, of course Herder and Cowan, 
that seems to be the go-to guys down the wire. That's the guys you want in there. And how can that change? Of course it can. But if if Wiley's not hitting the outside shot, if Nickens isn't, you got to just leave Morsel in there because Morsel plays every facet of the game. Every facet. Yeah, I almost think if Wiley and Nickens aren't making that outside shot, are they really worth having out there? Uh, that's what I basically, I, I'm not saying that they do other things and they have to play D, but Morsel's bringing a lot to the table. Okay. And it, but it is early. Justin Jackson right now is really not, doesn't just have it. He made a big three down the line, but you're not seeing the top five draft picks. So do you think, knowing a little bit about him, because we've talked to him media day, uh, emotionally that, that being a top ten player or a top ten projected draft pick is getting to him, Mason? I don't think so. I don't think so yeah. either. But this in team, about 20 minutes he might be out here shooting because he goes right back to work and you know he'll be back. This team is a work in progress and you're kind of seeing it develop like he was talking about Steve Lavin said you're, you're seeing it develop slowly by slowly now down 15 at halftime it's not good you do this on the road you're not coming back it was at home and they had the energy and the whole thing they came back but you do this on the road and you're a loser so you can't come out flat like they did I you know to me it seemed like Bucknell just played great for a little while yeah for a little bit their down low post scoring was definitely there, but the atmosphere in this place when the game came down to it was just amazing. It wasn't sold out by any stretch of imagination, but these fans, they love their basketball. Yeah, it was uh, it was special, and uh, what can we say? A big win. What can we say? We can say that you got to catch In the Nest at 9 a.m. tomorrow on 1300 CBS Sports Radio, and then on Wednesday... We're going to have a special edition with the Young Terps. The Young Terps are going to be with us to give, give them a full segment, see where they're at live, but they'll be fine. Yeah. Mason's been live a lot. But we can't leave the show without talking about the women play Connecticut tomorrow. Oy, I, don't, I don't know how that's going to go. But the women also play the field hockey field, team yep. for a natty, for a national title, right. 2 o'clock on NCAA.com. Right, and Todd Carton is out there covering it for us. So... For Wayne Viner, Bruce Pazer, intern Mason. See still over there to our left, A.J. Francis and Glenn Clark. On. Glenn Clark and Glenn Clark Radio. We'll wrap it up tonight. Maryland over Bucknell in an exciting game, 80-78 here at Xfinity Center. Uh, Bruce, we'll see you on the radio at 9 a.m. tomorrow. We'll hear you on the radio. Well, All right. One way or the other. Drive safely, everyone. Good night. Because you don't even know. I can make your hands clap.